Hello creative ones, this is Robin Dudley House coming to you from my studio in Los Angeles, California. I am going to attempt to take a very, very, very old book, this one here, I've already kind of started working on it, um, and using the covers because they're still really sturdy, really, really, really sturdy. The only part that's not sturdy anymore is really the spine and the insides. So I've um, already started taking the insides apart. It was an old German um, cookbook and has some recipes and stuff in it, kind of gross pictures of meat. <laughs> um, and uh, the pages are just so brittle. So I use these in um, collages a lot. And I've, I have so many old books now from collecting for years and using all the pages inside for junk journals that I want to start using them. I haven't thrown them away, but you can see how it's just tattered and falling apart. And I thought it would be great for my next journal. So it has a nice spine on it. What what I'm my thought is is um, the journal, the junk journal is going to be a um, a mermaid theme. So I was kind of toiling toying around with lots of different ideas to make my own cover like I normally do but I really kind of like this old look and it looks perfect on here so all I'm really going to do is I'm going to remodel and reconstruct the the um, binding it looks like the person who owned this originally already really loved this book so they had started um, repairing it and I just glued this down because it was coming off um, and here it looks like they had put paper on here just to hold it all together. And so I'm going to just keep doing that. Um, and when I come back, I'll show you uh, what it looks like. I've kind of cleaned it up. There was a bunch of debris on it. And there's these staples on here, which is odd. I, I normally just use strings holding the pages together. But uh, I'm going to be taking all these old staples out and then I will just show you my process of what I'm going to be doing from here until I finish. Okay, I took all the staples out. There was a ton of them in there and this is what it looks like. Lots of little bits of paper in here so I'm just going to scrape those out. That's not typical from what I've seen anyway from old books. With staples it's usually a bunch of string holding the pages together so um, yeah these are just loose pieces of paper so I'm just going to take those out because the mesh behind here is still usable I'm, uh, I want to keep that just for a reinforcement scrape these out and clean that up to come back uh, after I've done all that and use some Mod Podge and some book binding paper. It's like a, it's called, uh, oh gosh, my, uh, ran a blank. I'll tell you in the next when I figure it out. But it's, it's, it's fabric that's very thin but extremely sturdy and it's used for um, book making and book binding. Okay, it's book cloth. That's what it is. Of course, when you're videotaping, your mind goes blank a lot of times. So, um, and if you don't, if you've never used book cloth, I've used it before in another video where I did a accordion book and I extended the binding on it. <clears throat> you can look it up on Google. Just look up book cloth. It has paper on the back, very thin, um, very strong, durable fabric on the other side, and I'm just going to glue it down. And what I'm going to do is, I thought that I was going to make it a completely new inside page, but I really like this old deco look, and it kind of goes with the theme <clears throat> in my the journal that I'm going to be making. So I'm going to take these old pages out. I'm going to use these. I really love this uh, Art Deco print, or Nouveau. It might be uh, Nouveau as well. And I am going to glue this down with some Mod Podge. I did a little bit of a deco edge on it with my decorative um, blade. And <clears throat> excuse me, that's probably all I'm going to do on here. And then once it's dry, I'm going to punch holes in it, and that'll be used for my signatures. The outside, 
I love how decrepit it looks, but it's gonna, it's literally just gonna like fall apart. So I will glue this down. I might even add some distressed looking masking tape on there too, just, just to give it more of a vintage vibe. And um, so I'll go ahead and just glue this down. This paper is kind of annoying because it comes in a roll, at least the one I had, I've had it for years. And I had to iron it out and it's still kind of rolled up. So I'm gonna have to use clips to make it stay in place and maybe a weight because it's just super. Rolled up there. So I'm gonna slap down some Mod Podge. And you know, for those of you who are purists, you would probably wanna use some kind of glue that's archival, but um, I'm not doing that. I don't have any with me. And <clears throat> I'm just going to use the Mod Podge to glue this down. You can also use some kind of a gel medium, matte medium, you know, from uh, and I'm really going to put a lot of glue down because this is loose under here. So I just really want to make sure that this stays. And then I'm also going to put some on this as well and then let it sit and dry. Yeah, but the glue, um, there's something called Yes Glue, which bookmakers have been using for years, so that's something you could use. It's kind of a dry glue, and kind of thick. So, putting the glue down on here, and then <coughs> I'm gonna be putting it on here too. Just kind of slathering it on there to make sure it really sticks. And I'll be mod podging the covers, inside covers as well. Uh, just so it kind of preserves them a little bit. I'll move this to the side. I hope this gives you some ideas for books that you might have, um, especially if you have a lot of them and you don't know what to do with them. I firmly believe in repurposing things, especially if they're old and they have character. I just love the way old things look because they're not made that way anymore. So I'm going to glue this down, just keep pressing it. Put that in the water. So this is dried. I really like the way it came out. It uh, feels like it's really sturdy and I didn't have to do much um, to take a de decrepit looking spine and make it uh, sturdy again. And then the back, the front cover is a different story. It's going to fall apart unless I reinforce it. So my thought process is I'm going to seal it with some Mod Podge again. I'm going to stuff some fibers in here and then may or may not show uh, when I cover it a little bit but I want the feeling to look like this is a precious old journal and that I was trying to save it by putting bits of tape here and there maybe little pieces of fiber just to kind of keep it in shape and hold it in place so I'm going to put some Mod Podge on here to kind of hold down these pieces of very brittle paper to kind of stay down. And then I'm going to take pieces of scotch tape, I mean not scotch tape, uh, masking tape, and make a few different types of strips that may simulate vintage um, tape that I can add to this. 
I don't want it to be too bulky because most of the, the front cover is going to be covered with my cover that I already made, the decorative cover. I just really want it to look like I'm just trying to hold it together with some old tape and maybe pieces of lace and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. But So now I'm going to take, I've put some Mod Podge on there to kind of reinforce it so it's not so brittle. And I'm going to just take some uh, tea dyed cheesecloth and stuff it in some of the areas that are kind of puffy because originally, uh, from what I can tell, the spine came off, the original spine from this. So they taped it with paper and little bits of tape here. And so I, I don't mind the fact that it's kind of soft, but I still want it to have some kind of be a little bit sturdier than it is. So I'm going to stuff some of this in here with some glue. It'll kind of fill it up. And then I may or may not have some of it sticking out like that. And while this is drying, I'm going to set this to the side and let it dry. And then work on some wax paper that I have here so that I can start playing around with different finishes for the um, masking tape. So I'm going to use masking tape and maybe some bits of lace. And I'm going to discolor them maybe with some alcohol inks. I might even use paint. I'm not sure though. Some brown ink pads and then maybe some tea bags. So some of this may be used uh, for part of the binding. So we'll go ahead and play. I think I'm going to put this in the water again. I don't think I need that for right now. So and I think that when you do experiments like this, even if you're not going to use all of it, it will be useful in some other uh, junctional that you make. So I'm going to take some pieces of masking tape and just stick them down. I'm going to make a like a line of different samples. And hoping the wax paper will repel it, make it come off <clears throat> when I'm ready to use them. And I like when that happens. It's kind of a ripped piece. That looks kind of cool. I like that. This is really good masking tape too, it looks like. It's the Scotch brand. I even take some of these little pieces. Thought about using leather, but that maybe for another time, since I've already made the cover, it's it I don't want it to be too bulky. Bulky. And some of these I might use inside of the journal as decorative elements for collages or whatever. You know, depends on how, how they look. And I thought I would uh, add some fine looking pieces onto the tape I'm just rubbing the ink pad on the top it's going to try a little bit of alcohol ink that. 
so this color is latte. I'm just smishing it around with the tea bag. I've learned that if you try to smush it around with a paintbrush, the paintbrush soaks up all the ink, so at least it has for me. <clears throat> I'm liking this. I, I like the mix, actually. This is walnut stain. Where is it? Did I do the wrong one? Let's see. Oh, this is walnut. I had put the wrong lids on. I like this effect of using the direct to paper ink pad. That's that one. And this is walnut. The walnut is a, a lot darker. Yeah, this looks really cool. I like this. So the combination of the ink pad and the alcohol inks. I have butterscotch here, but I'm not going to use that. I just, I really like how this is looking, the latte. Just kind of dab it on there. Just kind of tapping that. And then these are the tea bags, so I'm just gonna, I don't know, that I'm, I may or may not use them on the uh, binding. So for those of you who are new to the tea bags, you just take your regular tea bag and after it's you've done, you're done using it, you dry it and then you empty out the contents and then you have um, these really awesome pieces to use in your uh, collages. Um, I think I'm going to maybe use this and distress it, a little piece of lace. So it's kind of nice to have lots of different components. This is kind of how I teach my class in my journal making class where we make lots of different um, pieces of ephemera and envelopes and bits of, uh, you know, pieces like this that you can add if you want to so they're, re they're available for your your journal and you may not necessarily use them all but they do come in handy for collages that they're already ready to go so I'm just kind of distressing this lace with some ink from the ink pad and maybe I'll kind of experiment with some of this toll and put some of it on the uh, tea bags. I like that. Um, also, I was thinking that if you wanted to, you could use gauze pads because it kind of simulates the gauze that's in the binding. So it looks like this. It's kind of like cheesecloth, but it's a little bit more open weave. See that? So I'm going to go ahead and dye some of this. And I think I will use my Mod Podge to kind of glue some of this down. Once that dries, I might distress it a little bit more, but it looks like this. 
That'd be kind of an interesting component. I could cut it if I wanted to. And let's see, maybe I'll put some of this down here. So this is smearing the ink that I have on there, which I like because I didn't like the way it looked on the lace. So that looks actually pretty cool. I like that. Maybe do another one. I think I'll add a little bit of alcohol ink to this and um, smudge it around with the Mod Podge. So these pieces will be semi-stiff because of the Mod Podge, which will give more strength to the uh, binding. I'm just tapping this so that it doesn't smear it too much. I kind of like the way it looked. Might just let it sit and see if it dries right. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. I can redo the uh, grungy look. And I'm just going to put some Mod Podge on here. I might undo this a little bit. So you can get these pads, you know, in the medical section of <clears throat> a pharmacy. I'm just going to distress it with some ink here. And then it should kind of disperse the color once I put some Mod Podge on it. Of course, you could always tea dye this. This is just a quickie method of distressing it. Tea dye it or coffee dye it. the glue's on my pad now. I'm just putting some Mod Podge on here to stiffen it up. And then I could actually, when it's dry, I can add more dye to it. And we'll see how this works for the uh, binding. I'm liking the way that the, the um, tape is looking and all the different components so especially this piece of lace here and it goes with the, the theme of mermaid ocean this kind of reminds me of a net a fish net so I might be able to use that um, somewhere in the journal Gonna let it dry. Okay, I really like the way these came out, and I like the way the uh, journal is starting to look. It feels a lot uh, less brittle, and but it still has this kind of rough and tumble look, and this is very stable. So. These are awesome. They came out really great and my experiment worked. These just come right off so I can take these strips and tear them if I want and then just I'm going to glue them down with some tacky glue. So I think what I will do is I'm going to just color this a little bit more with a bit of this latte. some 
kind of start laying some strips down and see what they look like. Here's that piece of gauze and it's kind of stiff. So I don't know if I'm going to use it, but um, let's see here. I'm just going to take all these pieces off and just kind of start playing with them and see how they look. I love that one. It's the uh, lace that's been discolored with the alcohol inks and the ink pads and then glued on to the tape. I'm just going to take these off and set them to the side. And I'll, like I said, I'll be using tacky glue to actually make them stay because even though they're a little bit sticky, they're not going to stay. It's kind of like washi tape. We made our own distressed washi tape. This is one of those things that you can make quite a few pieces of and then have them, you know, you can have a piece of this wax paper so that you have them ready to go. I really like this one a lot. See that? That's tool on a tea bag. So the great thing about this is I can just kind of put it on there and see how it looks. And mind you, this is going to be kind of covered up because of the cover here, which is not done, but See how I love the way that looks. Looks very old. And then I could also add more ink to this to kind of distress it. And I'll be showing you the finished journal next week on the Tuesday. Next Tuesday after this. Um, well, that's kind of cool. I like that. I'm not sure if I like that. I don't know if I like this actually right here. Well, that just came right off. I kind of like this torn look like that. So you can just play around and see what works since it just comes right off. Kind of look like the makeshift hinges. And then this one, since it's torn, I don't like that look right there, so I'm gonna ink it up a little bit. thinking I like that and this will be glued down and um, that's all I'm going to show you for today because I am going to keep be keep working on this and starting to fill the inside with journal pages thank you for watching subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you know when I load another video I'll see you in the next video